Hi, this is Dave from The Omniverse. We're about to chat to Pepe Larraz. Hi, happy to be here. Pepe's been working for Marvel since 2010. You'll recognize his artistic stylings from a number of titles, including Uncanny Avengers and House of X. He's also providing interiors for the brand new big game miniseries from Image Comics with famed writer Mark Miller. So, Pepe, you're known mostly as a as a Marvel artist. Um, it seems that there's virtually no character left that you, haven't, you haven't drawn. Um, who is it you'd most like to to give a go at? No, actually, there is a lot of characters I haven't drawn yet. I mean, in pages, uh, actually, in covers, there must be a few. But uh, in, in interior pages, there's a lot of them. Uh, for example, I would love to do some uh, Doctor Strange pages someday or Spider-Man pages someday. But um, yeah, I had, uh, I had the chance to draw uh, a lot of characters. Actually, it was fun when we were to the cinema to see Endgame. And, you know, all of them, they were showing up. And it was uh, like, OK, I did that. And I did that well, and that well, and that well. <laughs> so. That's so cool. So you've drawn a fair few new characters for Marvel as well. Um, who do you think is the, the one you're most proud of? Well, there is a lot of them. Uh, most proud of probably will be uh, the first one that comes to my mind is uh, the Young Cable for the X-Men, that it uh, was around for, for uh, you know, a couple of years or, or so. And uh, I love this design. And uh, I, I like the design of the Sons of uh, Apocalypse, I did. It was, it was uh, this is a funny story with that, because I designed them in an, one hour, the four of them, because I had like little time to do that. So I didn't, uh, when you do a design, uh, you have to make an interesting design, but at the same time, you must make that design functional so you can draw it a yeah. lot of times without losing an, 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 you know, too much time. And so I skipped that part. So I make a super complicated design because they were showing up in one panel in House of X. So I say, ah, I don't care. You know, the next guy who draws this guy, uh, this, this, this characters, I don't care about him. <laughs> so it turns out the next guy who has to draw those characters was me again <laughs> in uh, X of Swords. So it was like, oh, who was the man who designed this? Who was? It was myself. So, Your own worst enemy. Yeah, exactly. No, but it was it was interesting designs. But the, you know, when the, the more you draw a character, uh, a design you you do, uh, you have done, mm, you you start to feel that things start to fall. You know, details start to fall slowly. You know, you, the more you 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 make him. For example, in the in the book I did with Mar Miller. Um, I was drawing some of the ambassadors, the, the new book from, from Mark. Yeah. And I was drawing them just from the, the character designs. Uh, I never seen any pages. Then I saw Frank Whiteley pages. And then I went back to my second issue. I was drawing the, the fourth issue when the first ambassadors came out. So I went back to my second issue and changed things and changed the characters. Because sometimes you learn the character from other artists. You know, you see other artists moving the character yeah, in the page and say, OK, no, 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 this is the way I have to draw this. Uh -huh. So you are learning all the time. Yeah. Is there a character whose design intimidates you and you'd rather avoid drawing them? Uh, there is characters that are super complicated and characters that uh, you think, like, I, I never get the hang of it. You know, it happens to me a lot with Captain America. I don't think I have the hang of the, of the character well. Like, you know, the, the guy without any kind of spot, you know, the... the, the the goodness and you know the hero I, I don't fit too well with these kind of characters but I don't know um, but I, I keep trying and the other one now I remember the other one that I never got the hang of it is Batman oh really yeah I don't think I ever drawn Batman I draw people dress as Batman but I never draw Batman yeah there is a difference there's a subtle difference but there, there is one and so look, a cosplay looks yeah, like a cosplay. Like, I, I draw Batman cosplayers all the time, so I hope to have the chance to draw Batman properly in, in a page and in a story, so I can finally learn how to move Batman in the page, how to draw Batman, because it's it's one of my it's the, it's the toughest, you know, one of the toughest. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you're you're known primarily as a Marvel artist, but presumably you'd be happy to draw characters from from the DC universe as well. Well, the things like I've been working in Marvel like 12 years by now, uh, it's, it's my home. I feel like home at Marvel. And, and I've been very lucky to be, to be able to have such a long run in, in Marvel and, and the years I re they remain. But at uh, some point, yeah, I mean, um, I would love to try other characters, other kind of stories, or 
I'm an artist, I have a um, certain amount of comics inside of me. <laughs> so I will, I will love to try. I'm always trying, even, even inside Marvel, to, to try a new genre or like, okay, let's do this more fantasy looking or let's try make this more horror looking because this way you flex on other muscles. This is true, yeah. yeah. So yeah, right now I'm, I'm in Marvel and I'm happy to be, happy to be there. Because I'm coming back from uh, a year with Mark Miller, uh, working with Mark in a crossover series. So I'm happy to be back home. And, and yeah, there is a lot of stories to be told yet. So yeah. You're working with Mark Miller. Obviously, you're working on stuff that's not necessarily big, established, named uh -huh. characters. Yeah. Do you get more of a buzz from the, the newer characters that you get to put your own spin on? Uh -huh. uh, or virtually create from scratch? Well, everything has its, uh, his, own, his own challenge. I mean, when you have a character that's been drawn many, many times by many, many artists, you can choose the versions you, you like and, and the versions you are going to base your own vision of the character. So you can pick, like, okay, I like the Deadpool of this guy and this guy and this guy and whatever. So you compose your own version of it based on the pre-existing version and, and your idea of the character. With the new character, you have to have an idea. It's important to have an idea of it, yeah. So what I think always in comics is like they hire me to give my opinion of things. They hire me to give my vision of, uh, yeah. of the characters, of the story, or I don't know. It's like mm, you have to think, as an artist, you have to think they want you to have a vision. It's not they have you to draw the pages, like in, like print the pages. Yeah, they want you to have a vision of things. So, spin. so yeah, I mean, it's, with some characters it's more complicated than the others because you have to understand the conflict or, or the story or whatever, and not not always you know all the characters. You know, sometimes it's like who is this guy? So I'm always asking the 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 editors, okay, like, hey, tell me about this guy. Who is this guy? What, what is happening to him? And, and it's nice. And, and when you are the one creating the characters, you are um, thinking about other stuff. It's like it's easy to draw, it's, it's going to be recognizable on the page, the silhouette works. I mean, is the costume actually telling the story of who this guy is or this, this woman is? And something, uh, sometimes it's, it's nice because you learn to draw your own character when you see other artists drawing your characters. Oh, that's interesting. Which is, yeah, this is, this is weird because you're trying to, to focus on one part of the character and suddenly you see other guy or other woman drawing your stuff. And it's like, ah, no, 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 I like, I, like, I like his or her take more than mine. So yeah, this is, this is the point. Yeah, that, that's, it. that's the glorious of the American comics. The, the best thing I think is, is that the, um, you know, the, the, proper, the, um, the characters, they survive the creator. So this is true. Exactly. It, it doesn't happen in, in other, well, it's starting to happen in France and it's happening a bit in, in Japan, but, but it was, uh, to a certain point, it was the, the, the characteristic of the American market, you know? I had uh, like three things I wanted to do in comics. It took me 12 years to do them. It was, uh, I wanted to do uh, American comics and be like a good artist in American comics, like, okay? Um, you know, not the guy that is making like uh, 12 pages in three days, Yeah, you know, to be out of that. And I did. And, um, and I wanted to do a good X-Men story because I'm an X-Men fan right. myself. And I, I think I did. And I wanted to work with Mark Miller as well, see, because oh, wow. when, I was, when I was wanting to, to break into American comics, I was reading the, um, the Ultimates, so it was like, I want, yes. to, I want to work with this guy. <laughs> I need to work with this guy. So I did the three of them this year. So I sat with myself, I have a, a meeting with myself saying, okay, what we do now? <laughs> That's the thing, how something you we are about? discussing with, with Marvel. Now I'm, I'm, uh, I'm doing a book, I cannot discuss about that. And I'm, I'm doing a, a, a book with Marvel. And next year, I think, uh, next year is when we are going to, to think about uh, the next thing um, we are going to invest in. That's the thing. Without giving too much away, obviously there's some some stuff you can't talk about. Is there one character from any universe you would most like to have a crack at that you haven't had a chance to yet? Wow. Uh, yeah, there's a few. I mean, I was very upset. <laughs> wow, upset. Come on. All the upset you can be. When Marvel uh, sold the rights for Conan, oh. because Conan was what I wanted to do. It's like, wait, okay, okay now, now I gotta do Conan. Okay. And they sold the rights. It was like, ah, no. <laughs> 
So yeah, I missed my chance of doing Conan. I mean, we had Mahmoud as our Conan and Esad Ribit Conan. I was like, okay, I'm grateful for the Conan we had because they were fantastic. But yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to make Conan. I did a couple of covers, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't cut it. It's like, no, I need, I need to make more. So yeah, that was my chance. I mean, the, my genre, the genre I like to draw is fantasy all the time. Right. So you can see in every book I do, I try to give the fantasy look or go into the science fiction, fantasy, whatever. And, and this is me like turning the wheel. I mean, like, okay, yeah, superheroes, but... Fantasy. Why don't we just move it over there? Yeah, exactly. And, and the character design I, I do, it looks like a fantasy game all the time. So um, I don't know. I think I, I lean towards that kind of stuff all the time. It makes sense, seeing a lot of the stuff you did on Krakoa and everything as well, yeah. it's, you can see that influence. You see X of Words, all the designs in X of Words. <clears throat> yeah, like heavily fantasy-based uh, designs, all of them. The you know, guys with the swords, the giant swords and all that. Yeah. That's nice. Uh, that's cool. It's great that you're, I mean, you're having a fantastic career. You're a great person to, to follow and see what you're doing next. Yeah. It's really exciting. So thanks so much for spending some time with us today. Thank you very much for having me.